All right, well, we're here as part of our series of Meet the MDI Teacher, and we're not in the actual high school, but I'm joined by Jennifer Riefler, who is a chemistry teacher and outdoor science outdoor science teacher. And you can tell we're outdoors, and it's January 20th, and it's cold outside. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly is. So tell us, we're, on, we're out here, obviously on a picnic table, but this is part of, you know, the MDI trail system? Yeah, so um, what we are creating here in the larger sense is called the Outdoor Classroom Trail Network, and it includes trails on MDI high school property that then blend into a trail loop on Maine Coast Heritage Trust co uh, property behind us and Acadia National Park property behind us. And it makes a pretty good sized trail network we're creating here. It's a, a work in progress. We have a new section we just added this year and more to come. Um, and so this idea came to me four years ago when I started an outdoor science class. And um, I had been, you know, bushwhacking around here myself for a long time. And thought to myself, you know, really, none of the students knew about these beautiful rocky ledges and gorgeous places on this property. I really should have them help me create a real trail network out here. And so there are outdoor classroom sites. There's a vernal pool, there's a pocket wetland, there's a rocky outcrop, there's a cedar swamp, um, there's a red maple swamp. They're all part of this outdoor classroom trail network with good learning environments in various places. Um, now, when we were indoors, I mean, you've got your chemistry lab, but there's snowshoes that were yeah. all all over the place, tucked underneath all the Bunsen burners and with the, the benches there. So you're teaching the kids, uh, they come outside in snowshoes and hike up and down, up and down these trails. Yeah, so we try to do, so the outdoor science class, I try to make, you know, very much in the field learning. So we have snowshoes. And this is our track finder for tracking uh, mammals, primarily, and birds in the snow. And we've been learning some tracking this winter. We haven't had great snow for that or snowshoeing. But that's all part of the learning process here is to learn outdoors, outdoor trees, outdoor tracks, outdoor birds, how you do things outdoors. Right now, their final exam is everybody has to teach a lesson in outdoor survival to the rest of the class. Oh, and wow. behind us here, um, one of the students has piled up a bunch of tinder and supplies that he gathered from right around here, and we'll be building a fire out here tomorrow. And another two students have gathered, or are gathering, um, various wild plants for tea, and they're going to be making tea on the fire. And we've learned all about the advantages of these native plants and their vitamins and their nutrient absorbing capacity and a whole bunch of things. Well, when you've got a, a, such a beautiful classroom, I mean, you've got to be able to take advantage of it. That's how I feel. I feel like, you know, how can we not be out here learning from it? So the, the outdoor uh, classroom, science classroom, is available to all grades, or is it uh, upperclassmen, or wh how does that work? Mean my actual course? Yes. My actual course is open 9 through 12. Okay. Any student 9 through 12 can be part of that class, and they can take it for one quarter, or they can take it for the semester, so they can mix and match. Um, and, I mean, this is a passion of yours, obviously. Oh, yeah. And you were, you were showing me that... Uh, the students have gone in and they've used uh, the metal working and to create part of the trail system. Yeah, I took them down to the metal shop and we used some old sheet metal and Bruce Munger helped us. And we cut it and sanded it and de-rusted it and painted it and drilled it. And we've used them as our trail markers out here, the bright blue trail markers. So that was really fun. I mean, and so do you, I mean, when you, I know my son is, he's dying to walk the Appalachian Trail and, and actually go through. Um, do you do in terms of camping and things of that, or is it, what, what is it limited to? It's limited what we can do in the 80 minutes. Okay. So we haven't, like, once in a while somebody might do a lesson on how you prepare for long-distance camping. Somebody did that last year. Um, 
But we're kind of confining ourselves to what we can do in the 80 minutes. And because the property's all right here, we can do a lot in the 80 minutes. Oh, sure. I mean, this walk where we are took us about maybe five, seven minutes. Right, up to the picnic table. And all of this is open to any class. So this picnic table is a great place to bring a class and have a class discussion or, you know, have students come do some art out here or reflection. There's a lot of different uses different classes can make of this whole trail network. Um, and we have students just today, their final exam, their lesson was an, a debris shelter. It's on the next set of trails further over, but they built this whole debris shelter and took us out there and showed us how it worked. And, That's fantastic. You know. I mean, these and these are lifelong skills yeah. that students are learning. Yeah. All right, so you, you've taught chemistry. You teach the outdoor science. Um, what brought you to MDI? I mean, you've, how long have you been teaching here? I think I might, I might be in my 19th year. Um, I've been teaching, well, I had a previous life. So in my 20s and early 30s, I did a lot. Uh, I worked for the U.S. Forest Service and Bureau of Land Management out west in Oregon and Washington and Idaho and all kinds of states. And I did a variety of things from fighting fires to doing a lot of ecosystem oh my word, stuff yes. and endangered plants. And so I came to Maine partly for a forestry program. But then I ended up, when I was 35, having two kids and doing middle school for 10 years in Belfast. And as much as I love middle school kids, I was tired of it and decided to go for high school. And this high school wanted me and I wanted them. Um, it was a good match for us. And um, so I jumped right into a whole variety of things. I've taught, you know, fresh on science, but a lot of chemistry and outdoor science. And uh, right now, for the last bunch of years, I've been teaching honors chem and AP chem, which is uh, the other whole extreme oh, of sure. sciences where it's incredibly intense and incredibly concentrated. And we have many labs. We'll do a lot of experiential learning there, too. Um, but it's a whole different, you're at the molecule and atom and electron level versus the holistic tree and ecosystem level. And they're both tremendously fun to teach. So teaching you've taught for how long probably 29 years maybe and then you've got i mean it's you you love it outside yeah this is my element you know put me out here and i'm happy all right and where did you go to college uh i did two years at the university of michigan um after a gap year i might say in new york city and then i did some more gapping as i worked for the u.s forest service in a bunch of states out west and then I went back to school at Southern Oregon State University, finished up, and then I went back to school again for a master's in forestry at UMaine. Wow. So I'm, I'm a believer in gaps. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot to be said for that, but it's hard to go back. Yeah. I mean, once you take that gap or any kind of extended period of time out of studying. See, I didn't find it that way. I found that I kind of chose what I wanted to do each time. And so my, I had a focus. And I knew that I really wanted a lot more outdoor experience, and then I would get these jobs where I was actually doing a lot of ecosystem studies, et cetera. And I realized I needed more education. Yeah. So I put my, I said, well, I'm going to go back to school and the things that I'm already doing that I enjoy and get more education in those fields. All right. So in the summer, I, I almost hesitate to ask, in the summer, what do you do? Well, I am... Um, you don't stay indoors and no, cook and that. stuff like oh, that. God, All right. Okay, so... For one, we do uh, most of our heating with firewood, and we get tree length, you know, six cords, and my husband bucks it up, and I split it all by hand, which oh I like doing, and that takes me a long time. And then um, I also am a member of Great Pond Mountain Conservation Trust, a 4,500-acre land trust in Orland, and I do a ton for them. I run the stewardship committee, and I manage the trails, and I do a whole variety like, for instance, I'm organizing the snowshoe race for February 15th, which is a five-mile, pretty rigorous snowshoe run over there. And um, so I have a lot I do around that, as well as I like to go up north, way up north, and go camping way off the grid where my cell phone doesn't work. That's fun, you know. And uh, that's power. I mean, that is that is great to be able to do that. Yeah. I mean, you're so self-reliant. I mean, you can go out there and what's the longest you've gone camping? 
couple of weeks probably. Wow. I haven't done months. I haven't done Appalachian trails. I have bad knees. I have two replacement knees. I'm I'm limited. And you're still able to though to come up here and yeah. walk your way up here. Yeah. What's the best thing about teaching at MDI High School? Students are wonderful. I just have to say, students always make teaching because they're the ones that you are with day after day, who you interact with, who bring to me things I don't know, which I love, especially in outdoor science. Students are always introducing me to knowledge I don't have, you know, things I don't know. That's really fun. And the other thing I have to say about MDI High School, which is why I just love this place, is that there's an inherent trust by administration that we teachers know what we're doing and we'll run good classes and they don't oversee us and they don't overmanage us and they give us latitude to do classes like this and to not um, worry about the fact the kids are using saws and axes and other things you know as long as you know we're do it on a job right and know what we're doing and so I find the level of trust by the administration for teachers to be knowledgeable professionals and, and, and to give us the latitude to really go at good teaching. I think it's great. What's the one thing that people don't know about you that you're willing to tell about right now? One thing you want to know about me that I'm willing to tell? Uh, I don't know. Um, I skipped a whole lot of high school. Really? <laughs> I was got involved in radical politics in the 1960s in the New Haven area, which we were living near. Peace marches and women's movements. And I got a lot of my education outside the four walls of high school, I can tell you. And so my day consisted often of showing up for chemistry and German and then going off <laughs> and leaving and doing other <laughs> politics. And who knows? They just kind of turned a blind eye to a lot of it. And I did graduate. That's but great. I was that kind of a kid. All right. <laughs> I was not the model. <laughs> the model student. student. No, I was not the model All right. student. <laughs> well, that's this week meeting an MDI teacher. And you can see MDI teachers are not limited or confined to the classroom. They are out in the woods and uh, teaching your, your kids uh, a whole lot of things. So um, I invite you to subscribe to the WDEA YouTube channel. So that way you can see all the videos that we upload on, as soon as we upload them because we're doing it constantly. Thank you very much.